Hello and welcome back to Jabila Revision. Today is another episode of Night Before Exams. I'm going to be looking at the important years of Crocsnavi. So, first we got 1169, and that's when Bertram de Verdun became Sheriff of Leicestershire and Warwickshire. And through doing so, he gained a lot of power. This is one of the reasons why he made the Abbey, because powerful people at the time, a lot of them, would give a lot of money to the church because they want their soul to be saved and they'd want their monks to pray for them. And next, in 1176, the abbey was set up at Cotton and the monks travelled from Orne sur Odon in Normandy to Cotton. And that's where they first started building their wooden structures. So that's where it was first set up. However, in 1179, the abbey was moved to Croxton because it was a more remote place and also had better farming land. And in, in the 12,000s, that was the year the years when there was the most amount of people at the abbey, the most amount of monks. It was around 70 monks at the abbey. That's the highest amount. And that was around the time the church was completed. And in 1242, Walter London became abbot. So that's an example of one of the abbots. And in 1253, the church was completed and consecrated, and it was one of the last buildings to be fully made in stone. Because if you think about it before, all the structures were wooden. It was one of the last buildings for them to actually finish because it took them so long to make, and it was made out of stone, of course. So that was all about the setup of the abbey. So next, look, let's look more at the best years. So in 1315, Crockston Abbey supplied more wool for the foreign market than any other Staffordshire house. So really the best years of the Abbey, um, the most prosperity came to the Abbey in these five years. And you can use them as examples for that. And next, um, it started to decline. So in 1319, the monks protested against changes made by Thomas de Furnival, who was a new patron. Because he didn't like what he was doing, he was coming in there telling them to change everything. And they didn't like that, so they protested. In 1348 and in 1369, there was plague. And that would have had a big impact on the number of monks, because many would, um, many would uh, of course, um, catch the disease and then end up dying. And the infirmary would be used a lot more at this time. So it's important to remember, the infirmary would be used more during times of plague. And in 1368, debts had to be paid to the mother house, and there was a bad harvest which is two more unfortunate things that happened to the Abbey, which hurt them a lot. And next, in 1372, violent storms damaged the Abbey and would um, damage a lot of the structures, so they'd have to pay money to rebuild certain things and that sort of thing. And in 1377, only seven monks were in the Abbey. So as we see here, it goes down from 70 to 7, which really is reflective of all these bad things that have happened. So yeah... Uh, next let's look that was the decline so that's when things started to go bad and then we've got the dissolution in the 16th century so in 1534 Henry VIII broke from Rome and himself became head of the church getting rid of the Pope from the Church of England which he set up in 1536 the act of suppression of religious houses was passed and it suppressed religious houses worth less than 200 pounds however in it was meant to shut down Crocsen Abbey and many of the other abbeys were shut down in 1536 however Croxton paid a fine of 100 pounds to avoid being shut down in 1537 in 1538 the abbey was dissolved anyway and the roofs were taken in 1545 the estate was sold to a noble and turned into a private residence and remnants of the garden, gardens were found. So this is the point where it stops being used as an abbey, and it's a dissolution to today. It's not functioning at that time. And in around the 1800s, the abbey and its lands became part of a farm. The farmhouse is still present today, and you can see it there now. And a path was built through the middle of the church to make the farm more functional. And all those things were built after it was a residence, it turned into a farm. And in 1911, someone called Charles Lynham, who was an architect, published a detailed architectural map of Croxton Abbey. And this can be used to help us see what's there and what was there. And it's very useful because it gives us a sense of scale. 
1936, the site was taken into state guardianship with something called the Ministry of Public Building and Works. So this is when it first started being protected by the state and it was owned by them. And then in 2008, English Heritage took ownership of the Abbey and they did a lot of things there, like um, archaeological surveys and looked at the land and did a lot more there than was done before. So yeah, that was um, Croxton Abbey, the important years. Thank you for watching and goodbye.